page, my story through fault and with the pain and struggle is a testament of resilience and unwavering determination to fight for what is right and let us stand united in the pursuit of justice, ensuring that our voices are heard and the struggles are acknowledged. And thank you for standing by me in this journey together. We will reclaim our city and pave the way for a brighter, more incredible future. Tiffany, you do not, you do not stand for my kid and you do not stand for me. I helped you in this fight. You lied. You lied to us as residents. You do not. You do not stand for me. And I want you to step down as mayor today and save our village from this deficit that you have called because something is definitely wrong with you. And that mental illness bill that you want to pass, you need to get yourself checked. Okay. All right, calm down, calm down. Calm right. down. Time um, is next. up. Time is up. Next. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot disrupt the meeting. If the meeting is disrupted, we will, ex we will disperse the meeting. Excuse me one second. Again, the sound is not working for the residents the, that are watching online. The sound is working. Well, they say it's not working. Okay. okay. All right, go ahead, sir. Okay, my name is Reed Harvey. I'm a long time resident since. My name is Reed Harvey. I'm a long time resident since 1986. My question is, what was the financial status when Tiffany Henyard was elected? What has your administration done or accomplished to better that? Are you aware that the village administrator currently is in a bankruptcy proceeding? Something like this does not happen overnight. First Timothy 5, 8 says, but if any provide not for his own, his own is what he has authority influence over which is as the village administrator and especially for those of his own house he hath denied the faith because he calls himself a man of god and is worse than an infidel worse than an infidel there was a meeting uh maybe two weeks ago the secret squirrel meeting well, maybe tonight we're going to have the city girl meeting. But essentially, uh, one other thing that I might just point out, and I didn't have time, shame on me for not researching it enough, but there was something called the Shackman decree. And so I'm querying that perhaps the, the board might consider whether or not there can be some kind of home ruling so that the political patronage and hiring people that are our cronies that walk on eggshells and can't really do and discharge their duties for fear of recrimination, fear of losing their job, or perhaps even personal attack. Thank you. Good evening, residents, uh, Edward Steve, uh, Mayor, Board of Trustees, Department Heads. Uh, it's been real hectic in the Village of Dalton media-wise. I want to start out by saying self-accountability is a bad thing in this administration. The mayor can blame everybody for what's going on, but she has to look at herself. Nobody told her to get on TV and lie like that. Blatant lies. Did you spend this on a credit card? No, sir. I don't know where they got that from. You, that's, that's unexcusable. These are easily verifiable lies. That's unacceptable. That immediate attention didn't get kicked up until them lies came out on WGN. Nobody was really paying attention for checking for Dalton like that until then. Also, the financial reports. Who's the finance chair? Stan Brown. Does, does Stan know anything about the finances? Can he answer any questions? They, the, the trustees don't have the credit card receipts. The mayor's re village reports, the financial reports, the stand have it because the rest of the trustees don't have it. And she's going to say everybody's lying. They do have it. The attorney general's asking for credit card receipts. I guess the attorney general's lying too. So this is where we're at in the village. It's self accountability. And it's, you can, the mayor can blame everybody. I know she wants to say I'm a black woman. And it's because I'm a woman. You know how many women that she's affecting? Look at what she did to Dr. Scott down the street. She won't even let her open up. 
Look how she talks to the other black women up here. These are all single mothers, just like her. Look how she talks to them. Look how she talks to the clerk who's old enough to be her mother. Look how disrespectful she is. If y'all can't see that, a lot of y'all do see that. I just don't refuse to see it. She's so disrespectful. And she told Brittany, don't say nothing else. I don't want to hear from you no more. How do you talk to an adult like that who's elected? Everybody that works for her know how disrespectful she is. So department heads, be careful. Like Chief lied last time and got caught up. The, 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 the calls were about to get repo. Oh, that's handled, trusty house, when it clearly wasn't handled. So when you be careful, there's life after this girl, and you have to move on. And if you're on camera lying for her because she told you to lie, believe me, it's all recorded. Everything's recorded. And be careful not to lie on something that can easily be proven that you lied. The chief said it was handled. It wasn't handled. They almost repossessed the cars. That's unacceptable. Unacceptable. So trustees, residents, keep watching. Don't trust the YouTube page. We're going to keep putting this madness out here because it, it got to stop. It got to stop. And again, nobody was checking for this until the mayor got on TV and lied right through the camera. Smooth, without a bite in the eye. That is dangerous when you can lie like that and that easily. A stuff that you know can be verified is true. So thank y'all so much, trustees. Keep fighting. Keep holding this administration accountable. Keep fighting for transparency and keep don't let her bankrupt this town and then blame it on y'all. And trustee Belcher, time is up, sir. Please put our picture back. Time up. is up, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I'm going to say it this last time. You cannot disrupt the meeting. Hold your claps, hold your statements, hold your comments. If you guys we want to say, step up to the podium, but you cannot disrupt the meeting. The next time that happens, I am going to clear the room. All right, go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Board of Trustees. Residents for the village of Dalton. I'm Valerie Stubbs, former trustee for the village of Dalton. 23 year resident, been in politics all my adult life. I'm 65 and I've been in politics ever since I was 18. It was a statement made by Keith Freeman that the village of trustees would not vote on to take a bond out for a homewood disposable. Well, for $1.4 million. Correct me if I'm wrong. The residents pay over $2 million every year for homewood disposable that's included in their water bill. So I wanted to know why in the world would you want to take out a bond that the residents have to pay along with the interest, notwithstanding, after you pay the 1.4 million, you have $600,000 to the good. It was also stating, and that gentleman said it best, that Mr. Keith Freeman, if you can't take care of the business of your own house and pay your bills, and this is public information, and you have to file bankruptcy, and you not, do not include both of your salaries, the one from Thornton Township. I don't know what your position there is because I have a uh, foyer and my foyers don't get answered. And also the village administrator. I've asked, are you a village administrator, uh, 1099, or with benefits, or are you just a plain 1099? So today, I'm asking that you either step down or the trustees for the village of Dalton that voted you in to vote you out because you are no good for the residents of this community. Also, I want to ask the question again. I asked it the last meeting, but the the uh, mic was cut off. Why is Trustee Belcher's picture sitting there as opposed to being on the wall with everybody else? It don't make any difference whether or not, Mayor, you like an individual or not. This is business. This is not about 
liking or disliking. This is about the business of the people from the village of Dalton. Ma'am, your Thank time you. is up. All right, next. First of all, good evening, everybody, to give me the chance to become in Dalton Village Hall to be talk, and whatever I will talk is nothing but truth. I've been in this village, been 10 years, Miss Mayor. I never have any problem to be uh, disrespectful to my business, disrespectful to my neighborhood. I've been in this town, been 10 years. And the way I have revoked my license, I've been paying my tax good. If I made a mistake, you have a chance to give me the chance to be, I can create my any mistake where I made it. I will try my best to be whatever the violation I have given on my paper is nothing but the lie. They say every time we have 15 to 20 police star come over there and helping us, that's not good. They never help us like that. And we never expecting. The last time what they give me ticket for $750 to be two girls argument of outside of my establishment. And this is the reason I have to revoke my license. I paying every month $8,000 rent. I have only one child, which one I'm taking care of it right now. I'm taking care of the another kids. I run more than 23 family house in Dalton. You're ruining your own people end of the day. And everybody get hurt is a small people is very important. Everybody run the life just because of that they have been getting good pay from the good establishment. If the good establishment, good business not gonna come in the Dalton, how the Dalton gonna survive? That's all I wanna talk. I just wanna be a fair justice and I'm not trying to lose, revoke my license. I work hard for my money. And you really work hard for your money, and when you have to lose for no reason, it's hurt. It's nothing but hurt. Thank you, guys. All right, next. Greetings to uh, the citizens, elected officials and media especially. We need the media simply because there are strategic power outages at certain times throughout these proceedings, just like last week. And denials notwithstanding, we know that's a blatant lie. Secondly, um, I usually address most of my uh, comments to the audience, but I'm gonna talk to Tiffany Henyard and Keith Freeman. Keep my name out of your mouth, okay? Now, unless you want it back because you will get it back. I'm just letting you know face to face, I'm not going behind your back. I'm telling you to your face, please, we are not on a first name basis. Let's not pretend anymore, okay? If you got that, I hope, I hope you got that. Uh, next, I couldn't believe I looked at this agenda and saw the word secret squirrel on a freaking, uh, on, on, a, on a professional agenda for a village. If you look on that first page, she has secret squirrel meeting on there. You know what made that necessary? 11, Council meetings. There have been 11 meetings like this that have been canceled where the trustees get to get their agenda items on the, on the uh, agenda and they have been unilaterally canceled by this secret squirrel administration because squirrels hide stuff. They bury stuff in the wintertime and hide that dirt. This is what is happening right now. So if you want to put secret squirrel on a freaking agenda, get some help. Uh, secondly, City Hall, this City Hall that we pay for has been shut down 11 times in a row. That's why we have to have those other meetings. We can't even get access to our City Hall. Okay, think about that for a minute. Only because people want to hide their little secret squirrel agendas and then come back and, and run and rave and insult people when they bring it up. That is absolutely pathetic. And I was wondering, the audit, is the Auditor General a, a, a aware of what's going on here? If we can get something from the, get the Auditor General in here, because there is no way all of this paperwork has been, you know, keeps staying hidden. The secret squirrel has buried it. So we need to deal with the secret squirrel's lack of transparency. This is what we got here. So we can sit up here and pretend this is a, an official proceeding, but there's another official proceeding that's supposed to happen every third week in the month, and it hasn't happened 11 times straight, and that is obviously intentional. So enough is enough, okay? We got, if you're not gonna be professional about it, 
and you just step down and leave us the hell alone. Good evening, Board of Trustees, it's residents, mayor, and the department heads. I'm here to express deep concerns about the township's lack of transparency relating to financial records. If there is no discrepancies in our finances, then why the resistance? Why not share the information to the residents? The mayor has recently reported in a recent interview that our deficit is two million rather than the seven million. If that's true, where's the proof? Yet she has failed to give us the proof. The mayor also has made claims that the proof of financial information is on the Dalton's website, yet it is not. That is false. We don't need any more videos. We don't need anything else saying that what you're claiming to do for the village. We need accountability. We need information on the finances. Stan Brown, trustee Stan Brown. I find myself perplexed by your position on the finance committee. Your role suggests a focus on our village finances, yet discussions from you from this critical topic are notably absent. Where are the finance committee meetings? Why don't you speak up during these board meetings? Where are the financial reports? Surely you should have that information, right? Why don't we have it? I urge you to refocus on the financial health of our community and share with us your actions and plans for enhancing transparency. Trustee Holmes, I must ask, what do you believe your role to be? As a public servant, your role is to represent the resident's interests, yet your actions don't align with our concerns and our needs. As an activist, you should be driven to tackle injustices and push for significant changes in our township. I urge you to align your efforts more closely with our community's pressing needs. Uh, to the residents, continue to speak up, speak out, do not be afraid. We demand transparency and that's what we should get. Thank you to the trustees for what you are doing, the rest of you all. Thank you for continuing to fight on our behalf and we appreciate you. Thank you. Have a good evening. All right, is there anyone else? All right. And so I have serious concerns about everybody in the room. We experienced the recall and I saw the recall cost. I wasn't able to get the recall cost in either side. The taxpayers' money was spent on a recall, but we're not deserving of the bill. We can't know how much it is, right? That's non-transparency. You guys had T-shirts, buses, billboards, mm -hmm. but we don't have a bill. How much was the bill? No one wants to say. Moving along, we have no meeting minutes. Since you were sworn in, Mayor Henry, we have no meeting minutes. The clerk says it's Keith Freeman's fault. Keith Freeman, what say you? Why don't we have meeting minutes since the mayor's been sworn in? The clerk said it's, it's because of you. Okay. Well, Kwame Raul will find out because he did call you in September and you called me. So we need those meeting minutes. Also, there should be an ordinance in place if there is not an ordinance in place on executive spending, no one should be able to spend how they want and then give the bill to the residents. If there is no ordinance in place, there needs to be an ordinance in place. That's all that was needed instead of that expensive recall bill that we never received. And so make sure there's an ordinance in place on spending in a village of Dalton. Also, the skate rink, the basketball court is across the street from a carcinogen pumping waste dump, CIRCON, water integration. That needs to go. Why are we sitting in a town that burns feces? Why is that going on? Jason, you were at the ribbon cutting. Dubs was at the ribbon cutting. Ed Steve was at the ribbon cutting. Why are we in a town that burns dookie? 
that tells me that our leadership ain't shit. Right? And so, Chief Lacey, you know, it's really disappointing that she made you chief because you violate a lot of people's rights. You violated her rights when we were in the water department discussing my bill and you pulled right on up. You wanted to put Miss Stubbs out for clapping, right? Like you so good, but we seen you, the whole village. We saw you breaking somebody's property. We saw you, yeah, in your team jersey. Then you wore it to an event. <laughs> and so you should be very careful about how you treat the residents because you do violate our rights. We had a right to speak. We had- Ma'am, your time no, is up. Is your, your time is up. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. some seconds. Ma'am, okay. your he time is up. I had like five more seconds. Your time right. is up. I know, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Um, that concludes public comment. Thank you all for coming to the podium to speak. Um, next on the agenda is general announcement. Are there any general announcements? We have an announcement. All right, go ahead. Okay. Good evening, residents. This coming Saturday, March the 9th, will be Tea with the Trustees. It's at 14700 uh, Evers, and it's Tea with the Trustee. Starts at 930. So if information will be given and things that you can't talk about at the board meeting, you can definitely discuss some of those things at the Tea with the Trustees. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? I have some there. All right. Go ahead. Thorn Township um, Supervisor Henry and the Board of Trustees of Thorn Township is uh, extending a tech savvy class for seniors from 11 to 1 p.m. every fourth Thursday of each month. Tech savvy class for our seniors to come and get savvy with the computer work. Also, Thorn Township Food Pantry from 10 to 5, 10 to 5 every Wednesday at 15340 Page Avenue in Harvey, Illinois. Uh, that's every Wednesday from 10 to 5. Uh, food Pantry, if you want to get a, uh, some food baskets, uh, don't hesitate to come to the Thorn Township Pantry. Also, if you're in need of assistance, general assistance, the township offers basic needs, utility assistance, rental assistance, mortgage assistance, burial assistance, and mental health assistance. Contact number 708-596-6040, extension 3132, or either 3135. Last but not least, uh, there's transportation that the township offers if you live anywhere in the township, uh, Monday through Friday from 8 to 5 p.m. If you want to travel anywhere in the township, don't hesitate to call 596-6040 extension 4011 that's it for my report all right is there anyone else yeah can i be recognized me sure go ahead first and foremost i know lacy will uh, probably address it later on but uh i'd like to send my thanks out to the uh dalton police department we may be small but they got a good heart and i'd like to send the thanks out to them thumbs up for apprehending a criminal from chicago that was pursued out here after a homicide. Uh, this individual, very dangerous. He took a shot at the police department. So I'd like to take my hats off and tell them to him for apprehending that individual. And he's now in custody and has been charged with first degree murder. That's the end. All right. Is there anyone else? Uh, I have a report. No? I have a report, ma'am. Okay, go ahead. Um, good evening, everyone. Happy Monday. Um, I would like to just make an announcement regarding our Thornton Township Assessor, uh, Cassandra Elston. Uh, she's partnered up with our Illinois State Rep, uh, Thaddeus Jones, and they've partnered up with Helping Hands Tax Network. So they're offering a free income tax return services for seniors. So for any seniors, if you haven't um, completed your taxes as of yet, uh, feel free to give them a call. Uh, they say it's by appointment only. Uh, their phone number is 708-730-1040. Mondays through um, Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. You have to be 65 years of age or older, total household income of $65,000 or less, and you must have a photo ID. Um, feel free to call them if you have any questions. And um, if you all have missed our tax appeal, so a few months ago, um, Assessor 
Elston um, held a tax appeal a seminar for all the residents. So if you missed the tax appeal for the seniors, we will have an upcoming event. So just listen out. Um, if you aren't following our Dalton trustees page, uh, feel free to do so because I will make an announcement so you all can appeal your taxes with our assessor. Um, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Does that conclude general announcements? All right, moving on. Next, we have mayor's report. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say thank you to the residents of Dalton for keeping me in your prayers. Thank you for loving on me, sending me uplifting messages. I do need that. As you can see, our village, our community, uh, myself, we are under attack. It's a shame that people can come to meetings and just tell one-sided stories and not get the entire side of both stories. Um, in the next week or two, you will hear myself speak to anything anyone has spoken about me, anything anyone has put out there, because it's facts over fiction for me. So I will state facts, I will show receipts, and I will make sure that our community is um, back together as one, because there's always one band, one sound. And I don't want people to get away from loving on each other, because there's so much hatred in the world that it amazed me how people can get together and come to a board meeting and just have hate in their heart and not love on each other, try to uplift one another. So my goal is to still continue to do that, what I ran for office for. I ran because I was, and still am, the people's mayor. I would not stop loving loving on you and providing a way for, for you. Um, I wish that people would put facts out there, such as the money that we win and we uh, got awarded. We don't have it, it's coming down the pipeline now for our community. All the programs that we create, all the housing issues that's in our community that we are standing in the fire for. I also want people to know that we help pay your light bill, gas bill, water bill. We even help you bury loved ones. We even did a mortgage and rental assistance, which was really, really dope. A lot of people came out to get assistance. These are things that people don't tell you that we do. Uh, mental health. You guys know I'm really big on helping people get through whatever that issue is in their life at that moment because people need help now. They don't need your help when you win or when you're successful. They need you when they're going through their hardship. And that's what I always have done and I'm going to continue to do. Uh, lead my people, provide a way for them, and go get resources and bring back to community because right now the black and brown community are always last to get anything. And right now, today, our communities are first to get things that normally the other communities will get before us. Uh, we have been awarded the most in the state of Illinois, a 6.8 for our village of Dalton, and 9.2 for Thornton Township. The most out of any mayor, the most out of any supervisor. So when people talk all these things, it's all gossip. And I get it, because all y'all are here. People like run off of negativity or, or he say, she say stuff. I don't sit at tables that people talk about people. I see that table where we talk about uplifting and how we're going to build a community. And that's what I want my people to learn and um, grow into. Because right here, this moment, talking about other people not going to get you anywhere. You will never grow by just trying to put dirt on somebody else. Now, don't get me wrong. That dirt is going to help somebody else because they need, they need dirt to grow themselves. But I just want people to know, like, stop. Stop with the mess. Because at the end of the day, we still going to be a village. We still going to be here when all the cameras leave. We're still going to be a community. And we're still going to take care of thy neighbor, no matter what. But right now, it's nothing but a show. And it saddens my heart to just see that people focusing on just the, the minute things, the things where you got to throw your hand, throw your rock and hide your hand. And that's what's going on in our village. And um, to my staff. Uh, I apologize for all the mess that the Board of Trustees have created as it relates to people coming into our community and basically harassing you guys. All right, quiet down, guys. Quiet down. Quiet down. You have to listen. If you don't want quiet to quiet down, you don't have to take it. But I apologize for that because a lot of that's going on and that's the stuff that you guys don't see. And it's the tunnel vision that I'm speaking of. You one-sided. You only hear one side. You don't hear anybody else's side but the negativity. And I'm here to tell you that they are having issues. Stop creating chaos in your village where we all lay our head with some of us do. Um, because I don't know where they lay at, but where we lay our heads, that y'all got to stop that. Because no matter what, like I said, when the camera's in the mess, uh, go away. We still have to live here. We still going to see each other in the grocery store, in Walgreens. We still going to see each other in passing. So that's why I keep trying to preach and teach that you have to love on each other. And to the youth, please love on them. I know you guys like to turn your back on them because they make mistakes. They're human. 
We all human. We all make mistakes. But it's a matter of how you come out of it. As I always say, we're going to go through it, but we got to grow through it. And the people that live here have to make sure you pass the baton and make sure that you're loving on the you too. Because they, you was once them. And now they need your help. And they look into the older people for guidance. But yet the older people sometimes don't got it. And I'm trying to educate the people. So you have to be willing to take the, the message in and then make a judgment, which nobody should judge anybody. But only judge when you got both sides of the story, not one side narratives which is negative narratives in the media so with that being said um i want to speak to women's history month this month is women history month and i want to uplift women uh throughout the state of illinois uh to keep pushing because i know i'm going through what i'm going through but it's a lot of women that's like me that's going through mess where people think they could come in and strong arm them and tell them what to do and don't think that they're not going to fight back so i want them to know to keep going don't give up. Never, never, never give up. And keep pushing no matter what you do. And this is to my women because I know how hard it is. It is a boys club. And unfortunately, they don't want us leading like we're doing now. I have two big, powerful seats. And everybody thought they was going to be able to come and tell me what to do. They thought they was going to start this little smear campaign. And I wasn't going to fight back. I'm going to always fight for what's right. And I'm always stay the course. And I will be victorious when all the dust clear. You see, mark my words. So... With that being said, I'm going to go into this veto message. The veto message um, is related to the secret score means yes, that the board of trustee has, and that's a meeting that's a violation of the open meeting act. You cannot have a quorum without um, actually coming here. Your meetings are set here for Village Hall, but yet y'all go everywhere else to have this meeting and to talk about village business. The board of trustees, and I repeat, do not run the village of Dalton. It's up to myself, the village administrator in our administration. That's who run a day-to-day. -day. That's who run a day-to-day -day in any other uh, municipality, but people don't got the facts, so they don't know what to believe. You just listen to one side once again, and then get both other sides to know what's true and what's not. So I'm going to read this into order, just so you know. And um, yeah, I normally have videos. And today I might have two, but um, anybody want to see anything that's going on with myself, anything that's going on with the truth, with the facts, with the receipts, I will be posting on Tiffany here. You're on the move podcast. You can go to Spotify, uh, Amazon. You go to any of those platforms to see uh, what is going on. And I will drop the first one this Friday. So stay tuned. because I know everybody asking and been texting me about it. So I just want to put that out there so you know it is coming. So that our board means can be our board means. And we don't have to go back and forth. And we can actually get through the business and then we can actually go home to our loved ones and then take care of the real business because when when they sleep i'm still working no matter what when y'all leave we still gonna work and it's gonna be just another story in another day so this is the message related to february 22nd 2024 special meeting which is the secret score meeting that the board of trustees had drink some first so i can get to it <clears throat> Before, before I deliver my veto to the items approved by the board at their special meeting slash secret score meeting on February 22nd, 2024, I must let the public know that the actions of the board are illegal and void from the start. Technically, I do not believe I even have to veto these illegal actions because the board once again acted unconstitutionally and in complete disregard for the law. This board can't seem to get it right. The judges have told them, and I repeat, they told them several times, they lost every lawsuit. So again, if it's me, I win all the lawsuits. They haven't won one. So everything they accused me of, we go to court, guys. That's why I said get both sides. We go to court and I win. Myself, me, the village, because I represent the village. Uh, the let me go back to <laughs> that part. Uh, the judges have told them that they can't take away the mayor's power or change the form of government. I continue to be shocked by what the trustees seemingly do. Not know what well. Let me take a go back. <laughs> I continually I continue to be shocked by what the trustees seemingly do not know about municipal government and Bert Olderson's desire to confuse the residents of Dalton causing chaos and leaving a trail of destruction and financial hardship in our community. I am ashamed of the continued behavior by Trustee Jason House, Trustee Tammy Brown, Brittany Norwood, and Kiana Belcher. 
I encourage every resident to take a stand for our community against their continued hatred. However, as the board will likely continue to ignore the law, I am vetoing all items passed under, under item seven on the agenda. So that's my veto, and then we're gonna give you a veto of the things they pass at their secret score meeting. I just wanted to point out the things that goes on that you may not know, for instance, the Board of Trustees taking me off the bank account. I didn't even know that. For a whole year, I didn't have no access to any bank account to make any decisions in our village. It was all up to them. Little do you know, I put a correspondent out to the uh, residents, and some of you guys read it. Some of you were thankful for me keeping it transparent, because they didn't tell you that. But they illegally went into a bank, Trustee Jason House and um, Kirk Key, and took me off a bank. And that's how you know that everybody's in on it, because no one called nobody here. This is a million dollars account million dollar account. No one called anybody to say, hey, did you know someone's in the bank trying to remove your name, your signature from the bank? Come on, guys. You got to call a say to say, but they did do that. They lost. The judge said it was unconstitutional, illegal. All these things is in the transcript. So no one has to lie about anybody, but these are things that my board members are doing, keeping up chaos. When we're supposed to work together and move the village forward, it's a shame that right when I got in office, I've been fighting with them and I still been doing the work for the residents. You need tree trim, you need uh, sidewalks done, you need your streets repaid, you need any type of program, I'm still providing. So that's why I said, check facts. Why they creating chaos? They haven't did one thing for you resident, not one, but any ordinance that they pass, anything that they choose to do, they literally put it on their secret score meeting and they do it because it's beneficial to them. So I wanted to put that out there and that's for the record clerk um, that it's not right what's going on in our community, and I'm going to continue to stand for the residents of Dalton. So thank you so much for hearing me. Stay tuned again. Tiffany Hendren on the Move podcast. You can check that out. It will be all facts, receipts, things you can utilize. You can repost, because I know y'all like to repost things. And then to those people that don't understand how social media works, I am considered a uh, clickbait. Clickbait is when a person go and they make a narrative, a story or something like that, and basically they put out different news, fake, ne negative, you name it. And basically people click it because it says Tiffany Hendrick. They make money off of clicks. I don't know if y'all know how that go, but that's how this game goes. So that's another thing of why things are moving so rapidly because it's now a social media type of market when before it was like newspapers or y'all to live in that community in order to know what was going on. So um, that's the facts to what's going on, and I'm going to leave it there. Thank you again for listening to me. Mayor? Yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. Uh, the mayor's official veto message is five pages, not including exhibits. So she didn't read it for the record, but is requesting um, that I present a copy to you and that you print it in the minutes of verbatim as written. And the mayor's prefatory statement that she did read, clerk, if you could also print that for the minutes. All right, next on the agenda is Village Clerk's report. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I noticed that uh, for the February 22nd, sorry, uh, February the 5th minutes, you said they need to be amended. If you can let me know what those amendments are so I can make the adjustments, because I don't know what they are. So the amendments um, are on the recording. So I don't know if you watched the recording, I don't know what it wrote is specifically it. that you're saying. The stuff that you wrote in the minutes for me, then I accurate. It's what I on the, the recording. recording. But if we could talk specifically or you send me an email, I will take a look at it. Yes, it's on a it's on yeah, the recording. I need to know specifically what you're saying is. Do y'all have a recording? We or the clerk play a recording now, but I just need to know specifically what those items are that you feel are incorrect, and I will. Make okay, I'm asking adjustments. right now. Do y'all have a recording for the clerk's um, part? Because I record the meetings myself. Right, but well. on the recording it says um, you got different dollar amounts on there. That's not accurate. Okay, but when well, I went back, I watched the tape. I know, but this is what I'm saying. Every time we do this, you never make any type of change. And I've been telling you for years that you never write my portion of what I say. And then when you do write anything, it's not accurate. And then I go look at the tape, and I'm like, okay, that's your job. You ran to be a clerk. That means to check the minutes. So then you don't write it in there. But everybody else got a whole paragraph, a whole book of whatever they said in the meeting. But mine, it was always referred to the mayor's office. But everybody that say something up here, you write anything they all say, anything. But me, you don't write nothing I say. Mayor, you do an hour long, sometimes two hour long um, report. 
And what I simply asked you some time ago is if you can just give me a copy, just like you give me a copy of the vetoes, and I will make sure your stuff is attached to the minutes, just like department heads should give me a copy of their report. Mm -hmm. The only department that comply with that is the public works department. They've been very on time with that. They have not missed a beat. This is how we did it before. I don't know why that stopped, but you know, I'm just asking something simply. If they're reading off a report, what's wrong with them giving me a copy? If you're reading off a report, just like you just read this veto, what's wrong with giving me a copy? I have no problem with giving you a copy. I've asked what I'm for it for quite some time. And then I can take that and summarize it into the minutes. That's all I need. Okay. But what I'm trying to make you understand for me is that everybody up here don't give you a report. No, listen to me. Let me get it out. Everybody up here have not given you a report. You write everybody's statement is what I'm saying. They just speak when you did my announcement. statement, you put that I said we make uh we bought it two thousand dollars. No, I and didn't I didn't say, say it do. It said in a minute. You read that wrong, or maybe I just it's not. It's in the minute. Well, we're not gonna go back and forth. We're gonna look at it. I'll okay, but what I'm it. saying to you, Clark, you know what's trying to go back and forth with you. I'm just trying to make it clear because okay, right. every time we come, it's not clear, and then you say you get it. I'm saying that in the minutes, I want my stuff to be written on the things I really say because you're the record keeper. So somebody go for you the minutes. And then you wrote something that I didn't say or didn't do, then they're wrong and they would think them are right. That's why I'm complaining about it. Okay, and again, I ask you if you can give me a copy of what you're reading, I have no problem okay. putting that okay. in the report. All right, the I got it. But I so guess you, just, you won't see what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Because at the end of the day, your job is to do the minutes regardless of somebody give you a copy and I make sure they accurate, that, no matter what. That, You're supposed that to make sure they accurate. That makes the most accurate sense is to get a copy. So moving on, I'm just going to go into communications since we. Can I get the minutes approved today? And I just want to remind everyone that early voting has started today. So if anyone's ready, you know, interested in voting for the upcoming election, it starts today. It ends on Monday, March 18th. And then the general election uh, voting day is Tuesday, March 19th. So in case you are not aware, early voting has already begun. That concludes my report. Thank you. Okay, and then last, uh, clerk, when could we get a copy of all the ordinances, resolutions, uh, intergovernment agreements, all of that stuff? Oh, I really need copies of the intergovernment. Well, I'm, I'm asking, when can we get a copy of I need all those things? Of those too. First of all, you have to be specific. The clerk maintains the records of the village. So if there's something specifically you want, just like attorneys and everyone asks, they don't ask for everything, they ask for specific items. I am not to give you all of my records. I am the keeper of the records, okay? You, you are, you are, and that's not what I'm records. asking. I'm still talking. You go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Respect. So I'm the keeper of the records. Is there something specific you want? I have no problems turning it over. I have never refused to turn anything over. But to tell me to give all my files to you, that's incorrect. That's incorrect. Okay. That's all. I'm done with it. All right. As long as you're done. All right. I'm asking for every single record that our village had. And when I'm asking for it, that don't mean you give me your original. That means you make me a copy of them and you give me a copy of everything we're asking for. We've asked for ordinances, resolutions, intergovernment agreements, and you have not gave us anything. He had put it in email, meaning the village uh, administrator has, and myself, we've asked, and you have not gave us anything. So what day can I come down and you make me copies of everything and then I have what you have? And just a point of reference, Everything that you put on the agenda, I never get the original copy of. Let's those go back to what I'm asking. You. What day so can I come and get? I get those. I'm not going to give you every record in my office because I'm the keeper of the records. I maintain the records of this village. Nobody else. I do. So okay. if you want something specific, you can ask me for it. But you do not get all of my records, and I'm done with this conversation. Okay, clerk. You do know that I'm just giving you, I'm going to educate you again about the law and I educate the public. The, the mayor has the right to review any record in our village at any given time for those that don't know how the rules work. So I'm asking again the clerk, can I have the records, meaning a copy? You keep the original. I'm not asking for the original. I want a copy of what I'm supposed to check out that you're not allowing me to check out. So are you refusing me the opportunity to come in your office to review all the records, clerk? Are you are you refusing to allow me to do that, Clerk Keith? Because we can go. I come down tomorrow at 9 a.m. But I want y'all to see that it's another side to all this. 
Y'all see the mess, whatever narrative they put out there, but you see that I don't even get things to do my job as it relates to an ordinance or resolution, something so simple. You can just email it to me in all honesty, but I don't have it. And I'm asking her if she just went on mute, as you always see, and this why don't nothing get done as it relates to them. And then we have to go and fight and go back and forth about can you foyer the records? Why would I foyer something that I'm entitled to get as a mayor? As a mayor, that's my job, for those that don't know that. But okay, she ain't got nothing else to say. Moving on, village administrator report. Fantastic, fantastic. We're going to go ahead and go. Come on, Ron. You come up next. Good evening, Mayor, trustees, Madam Clerk, department heads, and residents from the village of Dalton. Just a couple items on my report this evening. Uh, the first item is we are going to be applying for partnership with uh, Cook County uh, CDBG Black Grant uh, for a maximum amount of $400,000 for infrastructure improvements. Also, we will be applying for the Invest in Cook uh, project, and that'll be also for infrastructure projects. I will work with the Public Works super in, Superintendent, uh, Stacy, and uh, make sure that we get those applications submitted online. Uh, they are due on March 22nd at 5 p.m. Um, the second item I have on my report is the item that the board has on the agenda. It is an intergovernmental agreement between MWRD and the Village of Dalton. That is for 5,818 linear feet of sewer improvements in the high risk area. That area would be between Indiana going west and Sibley Boulevard going north. Um, this is a public benefit that will reduce sanitary sewer overflows and basement backups. Um, and I will entertain any questions that the uh, mayor or the board may have at this point. Okay. Um, because Ron, I think he said he had to go. Can we do a motion to approve this item? Are you guys okay with that? So move. All right. Is there a second? It's been motion and second. Any discussion? All right. Call the roll, please. There's a motion to approve item G on the agenda. Um, motion by House and second by Trustee Holmes. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stan Brown. Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Motion passed. Okay. And that was item C, right? B. No, it says D. Isn't that D? Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. All right. Thank you, I'm ready. All right. Keep reading. Thank you, Mayor, um, Madam Clerk, Trustees. Um, I'd like to discuss today the IMRF um, expenditures as well as uh, the police and fire, uh, excuse me, the uh, contract negotiations between our unions. Uh, as discussed last month, IMRF employer contribution lines are higher across all department funds because IMRF employer contribution rates have increased from far, excuse me, from less than 1% to over 7%. We are anticipating another increase in IMRF and the uh, IMRF rate in uh, 2025. The telephone expenditure accounts uh, with the general administration has increased compared to the prior year because the average monthly AT&T bill is uh, 70 to 80,000 uh, uh, more than it was compared to December of 2023. Uh, general administration or, uh, and other professional services and contractual services are reflected uh, plus 30,000, excuse me, $340,000. That's a, a $47,000 increase compared to the prior year. 
other professional services decreased because uh, in uh, fiscal year 2023, there was a significantly more engineering work performed by Robinson Engineering and the village of, uh, and excuse me, the village performed the uh, LED project. Um, The village also completed negotiations with the uh, police patrol, police lieutenants, and the sergeants, and they asked me unions. Uh, the remaining unions out of contract are the police records clerk and the fire department. Uh, the village would need to be cognizant of the various requests of the unions and have made a plan to find out how to fund those contract agreements because uh, with each contract signed, uh, overall payroll will increase uh, with each compounding contract year. Um, if there aren't any questions, that'll end my report, Mayor. All right, next I, is uh, Khalid. Mayor. Yeah. He asked if there was any questions. I got a question. Go ahead. Um, in reference to the contracts um, that you're saying because of the increase, uh, wasn't those increases included in the budget? Um, the budget we submitted um, was changed by the trustees, so you would ask, have to ask the uh, trustee who crafted the uh, new budget. Okay, but the original budget that you created was those funds included in the budget? Yes, they were. Okay, thank you. All right, next is police, uh, Chief Lacey. Thank you, Madam Mayor, uh, the board, board of trustees. The Dawn Police Department responded to 2,671 calls for the month of uh, January. They enforced 542 parking citations. They wrote 334 state tickets. 584, 5,847 5, red light citations. Overall major crimes are down, car thefts are down, and I'd like to thank the village of Dalton for listening when it came down to leaving their vehicles running, uh, when it came down to the winter, because that dramatically helped. Um, so I, there are some things that I would like to touch on, Madam Mayor, if I can. Um, so that way, everybody has a clear understanding when it comes down to these nightclubs and what actually was going on with the nightclubs. Uh, I'm glad that the owner of Ricky's is still here because in my hand, I have all the calls that the Dalton Police Department responded to, also where we had to call outside agencies where there were major fights, shootings, and, and guess what people, well, let me, okay, I understand. Major fights, shootings, and incidents at your, at your location. You don't have to believe me, you can you can FOIA it, whereas there's also body cam footage, okay? So in short, the mayor had nothing to do with closing down the club. It was the housing department, the police department, to where we enforced it because of the violations to where you did not have your license. So yes, your business was closed down for the activity that was going on in your club. Now, I have also, I have also, okay, I have let, also let invited you to come and see me, to, whereas we can correct some of the issues with your club. You failed to show up, you had your hearings. It wasn't just something that we did. You had your, you had your hearings, you missed your hearings. The last meeting that, the last hearing that we had, you didn't show up. So yes, sir, your club was, show, was shut down. I also have the U-Haul location. And the residents in Dalton know about that U-Haul place on 142nd uh, next to the expressway. To whereas what he was doing, he did not have a license, but what he was hosting was a strip club joint, all on paperwork, all on video, okay? So this is nothing that's being made up. This is nothing that, that uh, you can't look up yourself. Also with Pablo's, Pablo's, that business was shut down because of the incidents that happened there, where the shootings, whereas they had the fights, to whereas we had to call outside agencies, okay? To whereas even the Burger King across the street got shot up. So this is nothing that's being made up. People can say what they want, but one thing I'm going to do is enforce the law. It's just that simple. And you know why? Because the village of Dalton deserves better than what they've been getting. When it comes down to the repossessed cars, since Ed Stevens, I don't know if you're still here, uh, trustee house, uh, when that happened, and I brought that up, that everything was fine. What wasn't brought up was the mayor wasn't on the bank account. It was an automatic deduction once a year. I have no idea who makes an arrangement for an automatic deduction for a car payment once a year, but it was done before the mayor's tenure. And what ended up happening 
when the mayor was taken off the bank account, they conveniently took off the payment for the car. Now, you don't have to believe me, okay? You can Google this, you can FOIA it, and guess what? It'll prove exactly what I'm saying, but that's okay. So when it's said that the cars were being repossessed, the cars were nowhere near being repossessed. <laughs> They're not in a repossessed business. They're in, any car dealer is in the getting paid business. That's what they want. They want their money. But since we didn't know about what had happened, since we were not informed what had happened, trustee house, then what ended up happening was, guess what? That letter came out with your name on it and clerk key's name on it. <laughs> when we were made aware of it, it was immediately taken care of. So the Dalton Police Department was never in jeopardy of their cars being repossessed. And again, you don't have to believe me, you can FOIA it. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna do something, say it right, say the facts, mm -hmm. but that's okay too. The other thing was the million dollars that, that was taken out of the budget with that meeting that was illegal over at the park district. Okay, I'm bringing it up again, yes I am. You know why? Because just like was brought up in reference to salaries for my officers, who go to make sure the citizens of Dalton are safe, who go to these shots, fire calls, go to these domestics, they are entitled to be paid properly. But because it was taken out of the budget, <laughs> now it has to be figured out how we're gonna do it. But guess what? We always survive. We do, because we have a mayor that makes sure we survive. Now, regardless as to whether you wanna believe it or not, you don't have to believe it because the, for those of you that were at that meeting, you know exactly what they approved and they didn't approve. So this is not something that's just being said. But the bottom line to the whole thing is, is that the money that was taken out, and you're talking about defunding the police, I think a million dollars taken from the police is definitely being, being defunded. <coughs> and if you're proud of that, shame on you. But the bottom line to the whole thing is, my officers do their job. And everything that they do, they do professionally. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I'm glad that I am where I am, because guess what? They can get the service that they need and the backup that they need that this administration is giving you, because guess what? Right now, what's going on is politics. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. Right now, what's going on is we are uh, the community policing meeting, which will be tomorrow at 6.30. Come and voice your opinions about your neighborhood. You will see us in the area as far as walking, talking, talking to the residents and seeing what's going on. I'm pretty sure everybody in this room has seen my officers out there on the street, especially on Sibley. That was one of the big deals. Sibley Boulevard, I'm pretty sure if you ain't got caught by them, I'm not saying you should, but if you ain't got caught by them, slow down because I've instructed them to enforce the law. We also are initiating a new drone program. And with this, anybody that can understand the drone program, that's when a drone is flying up in the air, that thing is flying up in the air, and I have two officers that I have sent to school, they have, they, they have their FAA licenses so they can fly those drones. We will also have a drone car. And what this does is it keeps the officer from running into the weeds. It keeps the officer from going to places that that drone can pick up with thermo. And all of that, all of that is being paid through asset forfeiture funds, state and federal. So it's not coming out the general fund. Just like when we did the K-9 unit, trustees tried to uh, pull the check that paid for the K-9 unit and it was asset forfeiture funds. Mm -hmm. Who does that? Mm -hmm. That's okay. Because we have a K-9 and we have a traffic unit and now we have a drone unit and there's gonna be some more things out there that are good that you're gonna see. So. Bottom line to the whole thing is, is for, for now, trustees, if you're really for the police department, then be for the police department. If you're really for the residents, then be for the residents. Don't do it, be, don't do it. The, okay, you're yeah. out of well, order, well, you're out see, of order. So, so ma'am, ma'am, guess what? Guess what? For actually what's going on right now, okay? So going on what's right now? We have enough officers right now and we are hiring more officers. All right, so you out of order, ma'am. You out of order. All right, finish your report. Okay. So to end to end my report, ma'am, uh, with the trustees, if you're going to tell it, tell it right, not just what you want to tell, and back the Dalton Police Department. That's all I'm asking. All that right. is my May I be recognized, ma'am? Okay. Well, we're going to continue with our report. I
So, so, so can no, I, no, you I cannot, have time? No, you cannot. We're going to continue with our report. report. Okay, next we have fire. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Chief McCain. Not here, so Deputy Chief. For the fire department. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Um, trustees, Madam uh, Clerk, um, Village residents. Dalton Fire Department to date has totally responded to 953 emergency calls. 639 of those emergency calls are medical incidents, and 314 of them were fires, um, vehicle accidents, and hazardous materials responses. 953 emergency incidents with all averaging at least 15 calls per day. So we're actually pretty busy over there at the firehouse. Um, talk about staffing matters. Uh, on February 15th, the Dalton Fire Department responded to a structure fire at 157th, uh, 15700 block of Minerva. Uh, due to the additional staffing we had on duty that day because of training, uh, and training had not started yet, the crews were able to aggressively extinguish the fire without it spreading throughout the home, um, inside an attached garage, and outside of the damage we did, there was not a whole lot of damage, and the people were able to move back into the house the same day. Um, with our EMS trained staff on February 18th, uh, the Dalton Fire Department, we responded to uh, the soccer dome. And at the soccer dome, we responded to an unresponsive youth. And um, this young man was uh, unresponsive. We started to do CPR. And the significance about this, we used the AED and everything. Uh, the significance about this call is that there was a delay in ambulances because they were all tied up. So we had to call for it ambulance from Thornton and to this very day because of the acts of our trained staff and the, the, the guys and how they responded and did their job thoroughly this kid is living today so I just wanted to mention that uh, for them and with that um, that is my report thank you all right thank you next we have public works thanks for us thank you Mary. good evening all Public Works Productivity Report for February 2024. The Public Works Department completed the repair of five water shutoffs, seven water main breaks, seven emergency water shutoffs, two sewers repaired, 20 locations for potholes filled, three alleys cleaned, two vacant properties cleaned, uh, and 32 jobs to the Public Works Department, eight jobs to the Police Department, and one job to the Fire Department. Please be on the lookout for the street sweepers as we move into warmer months. Uh, the street sweeping signs will go out a week ahead of time to give you time to make arrangements if you have a vehicle outside of your house. Uh, but please be on the lookout for the street sweeping as we move into spring. And also, if you notice water coming from the ground or from a vacant house during the hours of 7 a.m. and 3.30, please call the Public Works Department at 708-201-3280. And if it is after hours, please contact our dispatch number at 708-201-3240, and we will uh, deal with the water leak. Thank you, Mayor. That concludes my report. All right. Thank you. Next is water. Juanita. Good evening, Mayor Board. Citizens, the water department is working with residents on their water payment arrangements. Also, the water department is open every Monday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you have any complaints about your water bill, you can reach me at 708 201-2977. Thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you. Next is housing, building and permits. William Moore. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening to our board, to our uh, directors and managers, and to our uh, citizens that are here. Um, Madam, if I could, um, I know we said that, um, you know, we're kind of cronies for you. It is an absolutely honor to work under your leadership with your, with your passion and your compassion for the people. We work tirelessly, um, so I just appreciate you with the vision um, that you have for the housing and the business licensing department. What people don't know when we came in, you never mentioned once that the administration prior was in shambles. What you said to me was, fix it, get it done. So I appreciate you not making any excuses. We're gonna continue to work. I wanna say to our residents, any of the residents that are here, that has called the housing department, the business licensing department. We work tirelessly to service you. We have our team briefs every week. 
in retail our team, we are here to service our residents. We will not get caught up in the political fight, but we're here to service you because you as a resident deserve better. So Bear, I appreciate you uh, with your vision, your leadership, and your passion, your compassion. We're going to have the vision and the voice in the room is going to be louder than the voices outside, so thank you. So I'll be giving my housing report and my permits report for the month of February. I'll give a grand total and I'll just highlight a few of the um, high items that we've collected. For uh, the housing department, my report, we totaled $49,520. We collected 18 rental license fees that total $3,650, 47 as is inspection fees. We collected $12,700, 16 escrow checks deposit at $12,000, 30 housing tickets at $20,670. Thank you, Kim, and your team. And now I'll, I'll give my uh, building and permits report. Uh, we had a grand total of $45,645. We have 54 building uh, permits at $30,770, 21 contractor's license at $7,000, 23 plumbing permits that total $5,050. Grand total combined for both departments is $95,165. Mayor, at this time, this complete my report. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Next, we have code enforcement. Kim? Good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for allowing me to speak. Uh, code enforcement. My department, we conducted 144 inspections for the month of February. We conducted 69 housing complaints, five animal rescues, and 155 citations totaling 29,500. I just want to say uh, to the trustees, like, I don't know what money was taken from my budget, but animal control is very much needed here in the village. Mm -hmm. And we working with a skeleton crew and, and the people need to be trained for that. And there's no money for that. And it's so unfortunate that the residents of Dalton will suffer because we got a lot of stray dogs that's running around <laughs> and we have nobody to get them. <laughs> we really do. And it's sad. Also, I just wanted to say that uh, Madam Mayor, Sometimes the best man for a job is a woman. Mm -hmm. Keep your head up. You know, it, it, it saddens me that I have to sit here and we can't work together for the greater good of the community. Let's just get something done for the people. Okay, you don't like the mayor. You don't like what she did. Y'all say the feds are coming. Let the feds do their job. <laughs> Let the feds do their job. Now, once the feds come and they don't find anything, are you guys going to be willing to apologize to this lady? Because everybody know the price of everything that's happened, but do anybody know the cost that she paid to do it? Now, I really don't know anybody here personally, and I didn't do no favor for getting no job or anything like that, but I come to this job every day and I work hard, and I got a bunch of hardworking employees and it's sad that the news cameras and the media come into Village Hall and create a hostile work environment mm -hmm. where people ducking and hiding because they don't want to be put on camera about something we have no idea or nothing to do with. Mm -hmm. It's sad that we have to suffer as the empl employees here of the village. Mm -hmm. Y'all out of order. Quiet, please. Quiet. Let her finish her and report. As far as the businesses goes that didn't get business license, and how many times were you warned about the garbage and the trash that was never picked up? Garbage and beer bottles everywhere, over everything, every day. Other, other businesses are saying, hey, we don't have any parking spaces for, for our, our patrons to come into our business because what once was a gaming cafe has turned into a full-fledged lounge. And people come here into our town and evidently nobody's read the ordinance because the ordinance says you have to be a resident to be a, a business owner in Dalton. So nobody's read that. I live here and I'm a resident here. I'm a taxpayer citizen here. I have a passion for what I do, but it, it's hard to do a job when everybody's just out to get you for no reason. Targeting. 
mm-hmm. targeting. I do a great job, but I'm targeted, I guess, because you say I'm the mayor's pick. Well, she did. She got a good pick. Mm-hmm. She got a great pick. And if all the stuff y'all say I do on top of me doing a great job, then you probably find you a Kim. I just want us to get along for the greater good of the community. And if you guys don't like what the mayor do, at least respect her and give her opportunity to run her term. And like she say, beat her at the pole. That part. She's been fighting an uphill battle since three weeks of being into the office. Mm-hmm. Right. An uphill battle. Three weeks of being in the office, you guys did a recall on his leg. What was the recall about? How much did the recall cost? Mm-hmm. And when she inherited this town, I believe mm-hmm. we was in debt $6 million to uh, the city of Chicago for water. A lie. For water. Now, now everybody want to say we didn't know the city of Chicago for water? It's true. So if we had a $7 million deficit now, how much of that deficit came from the water bill that was carried over from the last mm-hmm. administration? She didn't get this this uh, position without uh, any deficit. It was money owed to everybody when she inherited the office. Okay, you don't like her. You don't like what she's doing, but you should at least respect the person that was voted in to be our mayor. And until somebody show me where she did something wrong or the feds show up to get her, then we're going to continue to do a great job for the village of Dalton. And that ends my report. Thank you, Kim. Very well said. Um, next is corporate bills. Trustee Stan Brown. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, ladies You're and welcome. gentlemen. I did hear something very true today, and I and I appreciate that um, from uh, the old trustee, uh, Ed Steve. No, I'm not a finance major. I don't specialize in finance, but I generalize enough to read this report. We pay. We pay a finance director to put these numbers together. Mm. They scrub these bills down and put the numbers together and yes, it's being read. So this is not here where I'm gonna be debating on arguing about numbers. The report is being read. The numbers are here to be read. And if there's anything that myself, any trustee need to know, we got a paid finance director, uh, Tangenique Miller, who we supposed to take our uh, con- uh, concerns to. So with that being said, I'm gonna read for the January 30, 31st, 2024 corporate payment register, $213,261.42. Water fund register, $376.944.5. American Rescue Plan, $459.90. For a total corporate payment of $590,665.37. Their motion to accept the bill is read. All right, so it's been motion. Is there a second? Stan, Stan, you motion, All right? I motion. He motion. The motion and second, any discussion? Uh, yes, Mayor, I have another superseding motion. Okay. Okay, so I wanna ask for a superseding motion. This one, this is the electronics list, right? Yep. The, yeah. Um, these are same same items from last month, essentially. But I'll just to read them into record, um, I'll ask that we approve the bills as read, removing the following items. Page one, Aurelio's Pizza, $131.63. Page one, Best Western Plus, $318.14. Page one, Chicago Midway Airport, $200 even. <clears throat> Page one, Cooper's Hawk, $557.68. Page two, Dollar Tree, $145.32. Page two, Food for Less, $107.99. Page three, Irie Jerk Hut, $1,356.22. Page three, Italian Fiesta, $113.59. Page three, JJ Fish and Chicken, $68 even. Page three, Johnny T's Bistro and Blues, $90.30. Page three, Kirk's Barbecue, $676. Page four, Pot Belly Sandwich Shop, $126.57. Page four, Ruby Soul Food, $674. Page four, Sophia Tamales and Corn, $2,400. And page four, Tasty Crab, $458.79. My superseding motion is to approve the bills as read with the um, items removed. All right, is there a second? Second. All right, motion second, any discussion? Yes. um, Okay, go ahead. 
I read off the bills and, and I'm very concerned with individuals that has done the work and my motion is to pay all bills, not to take uh, certain individual vendors out. Uh, that's like discriminating. We take some out and don't pay and we pay other. So with that being said, I'm in uh, support of paying all bills as they being read. That's only being fair. Um, and even with that being said, reading these bills is the same way they've been getting read for the past 10, 12 years. The bills get read and then the trustees vote on it. Nobody came on this board. It wasn't on no petition that you have to be a finance specialist to read this report. So with that being said, Ed, Steve, um, I see why you're not here. Thank you. May I make a comment? All right, go ahead. Um, Trustee Stan Brown, um, these superseding motions are off the electronic warrant list, meaning they already been paid. So for you to say all these people should be paid, they already used the card and it wasn't approved. So they've so been paid because it's being put into record of items that were not approved by the board or if since we no longer have uh, access to accounts payable in my viewpoint, may have not had a receipt. So the items have already been paid. It's a matter of checks and balances. And since everybody, you just made the question, the great statement of we have a finance director, maybe if she um, give us information that we request, we wouldn't have to sit here every every first and do this. So thank you for agreeing with me. That's why I said this should be paid. It's electronic. It's they already, already been paid. paid. It's already been paid. Okay. Any more? I'm sorry. Did you request any of those receipts that was just removed? Any of the stuff that was just listed? Did you request that? No, I don't need that. Okay. Thank you. So thank you for that comment, uh, finance director. So if you didn't request anything, how are you guys telling the people that you request and we're not receiving, you're not getting them. So that's the lies that I be trying to play it's out not a lie. as mm -hmm. it relates to, they <laughs> say one thing, but Quiet, really the facts is the facts, which we're showing you up here today. And <laughs> Trustee Stan Brown made a great point. It was an electronic warrant. Why are we playing this game? Why are we putting on a show for residents? For real. Let's be 100. We all adults. If it's already paid for, why are we sitting here taking it out on a warrant? It's within the, thor the, the um, authority. It's within the uh, purchasing power. What is the problem? But that's what I'm saying, that people are playing pop the tricks. These are the games that we play. We spend about 20, 30 minutes on every bills list, and we're going to go through it. And they're going to take this out, take that out, and you ask why a deficit. When people don't pay bills, the bills still exist, no matter how y'all look at it. So you see who not paying bills, but they blame us. You're looking at it with your own two eyes, residents. Pay attention. Wake up. Stop with the smoke signals like it ain't working. So we got a motion on the floor. You guys want to remove those items, which is well within our authority, but okay, $100 for some food. Don't make no sense to me. But we will play this game. It's a motion and second. Please I, call I the got a, I got a comment. It's part of this discussion. There's no more discussion, trustee. We're done now. So we're moving forward <laughs> we, we now. We didn't finish. Trustee, May we're I done. For you to finish. We're, we're done, trustee. Okay. We're going to so be all day on the bill. The motion, because that's what we're going to do. Tonight. It's already a motion. Okay. It's already motioned in second. He's taking the items out. That's what we're calling the row on. And we're going to move on. Okay. But that I'll suspend the motion. Okay. Let's do this. All right. Go, go ahead. Call the row, Kirky. Hi. No. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes. No. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Motion passed. All right, go ahead, Trustee Stan Brown. Next item. Corporate payments for March the 4th, 2024. Corporate payments of $1,317,242.85. Gross payroll for February the 9th, 2024, 430000 $236.19. Gross payroll, February the 23rd, 2024, $430. $430,848.77. Melanie Fitness Center, $2,171.33 for a total corporate payments of $2,180,495.64. Motion to accept these bills as read. All right, it's been a motion. Is there a second? second. It's been a motion, second. Any discussion? Yes, Mayor. All right. If I may. Go um, ahead. 
Again, one, again, a superseding motion. Once again, the same items that we've um, discussed in previous meetings and the items, uh, well, most of them uh, repeat, re, re, are repeating on this agenda. So we um, meant it last month and I believe we mean it again this month. Uh, so I would ask that we approve the bills as read with the following removals. On page three, Delgado Law Firm, $48,001.15. Page four, existing concrete, $14,123.03. Page five, five star, $106,275. Page six, Johns Pro Trees, $155,000 even. Page seven, KM Ventures, $183,950 even. Page eight, L Lopez Lawn Maintenance, $10,050. Page 10, Pekarski and Sons, $32,360. Page 11, Raul and Sons, $181,950. Page 13, White Coat Pool Solutions, $34,788.58. My motion is to approve bills as read, removing the following items. All right, is there a um, second? Excuse second. Me. Can, I, can I piggyback on that right quick? On what, the motion? Okay, so what he just said. Okay, so wait, we're gonna, we gonna go into discussion. Let okay. me get the motion in a second. So it's been motioned by Trustee House, second by Belcher. Yes. Um, any discussion? Okay, I have discussion. We always get up here every single month and we talk about bills being paid. Here we are making more bills and we're not paying the bills that we already have. I got a phone call Friday and it says, um, I've called everybody in the village. I can't get any response. I've been calling the public work director and I think I'm getting um, play games with. Here is a bill here that we have made. One bill is for 12-14-2023. The other bill is for 8-31-2023. It is for Moscow Designs. Beautiful Christmas ornaments, I must say myself. They cost us $65,000 that the vendor is looking for payment as of Friday. And I do have the information here, so I do have fact check. I had her send me the email so everyone can have a copy and see this. We are not paying our bills. Yeah, we got the bag, but it must be empty because we ain't paying no bills here. $65,000 for Christmas lights. Again, they're beautiful. $40,000 for meat electric, 40,000 plus to be exact, $40,518.88. And this came from the account receivable uh, young lady, Kristen Daly. So this is not a lie. $40,000. We wonder why we can't get street lights. We're not paying our bills. Me re re refuse to come here to service us. You say they do the work, then pay them. Let's pay these people. We're not paying them. On top of that, we have a bill for $19,899.60. They are for 122 banners of those two. <laughs> for everybody just Quiet, saying, please. Now I wonder where these banners are going to go. Somebody tell me. 122 banners, they all can't fit here. So they must going to go up and down the street on Sydney. You want to talk about money being spent recklessly? Here it is. Pay your bills first, and you can do whatever you want to do as long as it's approved by the board. Get approval first. Stop spending our tax dollars. It's like it's willy nilly. It's not. And you want taxes to go up. When I came here 17 years ago, $2,300 in property taxes. I am at 69 plus. For what? For what? Stop taking my tax dollars and playing games with them. This is what I'm talking about. And then you want to say it's not true? Here it is, right here. And the email was sent to the Public Works Director. Thank you. Mayor, may I be recognized? Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry now. For me? Go, go ahead. Okay. First off, what we're not going to do is disrespect the Public Works Department by trustees that's never even been to the yard. You've never even been down there. Hmm. Okay. You trustees spend your time Thank calling you. my employees Thank instead you. of directly calling me. Thank you. And now you want to stand up here and discredit the work of the public work. I don't department. have to call you. I, I, call I, you. I, didn't, I didn't interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you. Now you want to sit up here because we're at a meeting 
and, and bash the public works department, the reason why you got water in your house today, something we're not gonna do. Uh, as it relates to me, we spend money for our electric to ensure that the safety of the community. When we got here, most of these light poles were exposed. The wiring was exposed. Most of them were missing. Most of them didn't have bases, caps, or covers. Half the lights didn't even work. Yeah. So before you mention the public works department, get it correct. Because I've never said anything to any of you trustees that I feel that was disrespectful about the job that you do here. But what you will not do is disrespect the public works department because these people are here every day. I'm out here with them to do the work of the people. Next time you have a discrepancy or one of the residents have a discrepancy for whatever reason they called you for, I don't know, direct them to me, please. Excuse me. No, that concludes. Excuse me. No, thanks. Excuse me. If you come on with the public works, you can't get in. So don't tell me where I don't go. I can't gain interest when you come to public works. Everybody want to know why you're there. They're calling everybody so that they can come over there. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. As right. I said, I'm not right. talking to you, ma'am. Okay. Say that. Say that. One second. Again, That's how this order. lady called me. I didn't call her. I don't go out here looking for discrepancies. This lady called me and emailed these, me this information. So it's not like somebody's trying to jump on you. If you do your job, she don't have to call me. I'm done talking. I need to Excuse me. Okay. Can right. you say something? If you go to page nine of your warrant list, that invoice that you're referencing, you're voting on that tonight. The other invoice that they pay in cash, we have um, receipts for that as well. So we're not not paying the vendor. If you all vote on it tonight, they will be paid. It is already on the warrant list. I need to be recognized. Yep, go ahead. So the, the point of the matter is this. We do not have the receipts and we do not have the documentation. You know, it, it baffles me how many you sit here and you say, well, I got the receipts. Well, please show us all people who told you receipts. I, I, like I stated, we do not have the receipts. Okay. We do not have, we have not received financial statements showing where we are as the village since September. We have a jumbotron right here that we use for everything else. If we have, show us on a jumbotron so us and the rest of America can see where you all sent the trustees the financial statements, the credit card statements. We have not received credit card statements since last year around this time. At one point when Trustee Belcher asked for them, the director, Tanjanique, stated we cut the credit card off. Trustee Belcher said, okay, can you just show us where we cut the credit card off? We still haven't received any proof showing that we cut the credit card statements off. The Here's the jumbotron, show it to us, where you sent it to the trustees, showing us proof where we cut off the credit card statements. I find it strange that the credit card is supposed to be cut off, but yet every month we're sitting here and we're voting on a credit card statement. Seems ridiculous how we vote on a credit card statement when there is no credit card. Again, RFPs, they continue to say, oh, well, they do the work, they do the work, pay the people. If they wanted these people to be paid, one, they'll pay them like they do everybody else. They don't wait on us, typically, so they shouldn't start waiting today. That's one. Then secondly, if we want them to get paid, let's be transparent. We all here, let's, what's the problem with RFPs? We've been asking for RFPs since the start. Bring the people up here and let them bid for the jobs so we know what work is being done and how much we're paying for the work. Again, we continue to be silent. You sit up here and say what we can and cannot say. The fact of the matter is we all just want the paperwork. We don't want to sit here and be belittled by the staff with the things that you didn't prep them to say before the meet. We're really sick of that. All we really want is the receipt. Send it to us. Put it on the website. We don't even have to keep discussing it. Put it on the website so every resident in here can see the receipts. America, ask this lady and the administration for receipts. Provide them to us. So And stop expecting us to vote on things that we cannot see. Nobody, no smart person with intelligence, vote on something that they cannot see. Like the blind leading the blind. That's what will not happen. So I'm going to say again, again, I'm going to say, if we are provided with the receipts, residents, we are provided with bids, we won't keep having this dog and pony show that they keep creating. We'd be able to revolt what we came here to do. We came here for the business. Residents are ready to go home. Again, provide us with the receipts, provide us with the RFPs, 
and let's pay the people that we owe first before continuously mismanaging the money and making bills. We're not paying the lights, but they paying for first class flights. Make it make sense. Thank you. Madam Mayor, may right. recognize. All right, yeah. let Tanjani go first and I'll let you go right after her. One, we receive an electronic warrant list because it includes ACHs, it includes wires, and in addition to that, credit card charges. I stated that the fifth third card that was issued by fifth third only was either canceled or suspended by whoever had administrative access. I will repeat that again. You can go and watch the video again. I did not say anything about Amex. Those are two different issuers. Please be clear about that. So if you still have a statement that is referencing that, you have statements that you receive every month, financials, since September. I also provided them to the judge in the case, so I am not lying, and you can check your email. And did we win? Yep, we did. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Though. One day you say we're not giving you financials, then you come in and tell us what the deficit so-called is. So if you're not getting financials, how do you know what the deficit is? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like, hold on. Go, go ahead, Lacey. Um, Madam Trustee, um, it's unfortunate that you said that, that we were being prepped. It's unfortunate oh. that we are still here because of something you guys could have got way before this meeting. But I get it. I get it. It's, po it's politics. It's election time. Yep. But when it comes down to the police department, nobody up here has been prepped. These are things that are going on that you guys also have control over. But guess what? You get up here and you say, guess what? We don't get this. We don't get that. Or they're being prepped. Well, I'm nobody's robot. But the bottom line to the whole thing is, is one thing you'll see me out there is on the street. You want to see what I do? Strap them on a vest. I'll put you in a squad with me. And you can see exactly what the Dalton Police Department does because we do a doggone good job. So don't you ever say that I was prepped. Mm. May I be recognized? Okay, hold, hold on one second. Go ahead, uh, Keith. I just want to uh, state it for the record that I'll be filing a FOIA request and I'll be sending it to uh, Tammy Brown. Uh, so I just expect to get the FOIA back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, um, just a couple of things. This is sad that we have to do this. Um, Tanjanique Miller just said that we got an American Express credit card, but of course we do not have the statements and it's not in our packet. So if you can please provide, could you please provide the American Express uh, statement that you want us to do, to approve? I want you to approve because last time since you keep seeing back and forth what we're not doing, if you can if you can just provide the information. We sat in a meeting in January. You said you had an email. I have requested the email. I have not received the email. Then the mayor sits here and say for a whole year, Jason and the clerk uh, jacked the bank account. They went in the bank and they took her off. There was a an ordinance that was produced. They used that ordinance, but once again, I had to provide and go back with information that came directly from the bank. And the guy's name is Nathan Colvin that stated that Tangenique Miller, Keith Freeman, and Janice Johnson was on the bank account and can see the information from Fifth Third Direct. Then uh, y'all have Lacey get up here and say that uh, the clerk and Jason House was on the bank account and that's how the mishap of the reaper cards. This is about the bull crap stuff that y'all see here and go through because Janice Johnson is the one that issued the check. Y'all so big on throwing each other under the bus, y'all don't even know what y'all be saying. Janice is the one that issued. So Janice, you're telling me because somebody switched names on there, they stopped the ACH, they didn't stop the ACH on them Tahoes, they didn't stop the ACH on those electric bikes, they didn't stop the ACH on anything else that been provided, they didn't stop the ACH or credit card on the $17,000 worth of skates, they didn't stop the ACH or debit card for anything else. So you get here and sit here and say these things and you don't have a clue on what you're talking about. But then we got to go downstairs and probably vote on $40,000 for a lawsuit that you can incur. You don't do that to us. It's not fair. It's not fair at all. And we shouldn't have to come here and keep sitting listening to this crap. Then uh, Tangerine just said the $19,000 that y'all about to approve is on the warrant list. Of course, that bill is from August. Who's 
to hell want to see Tiffany Pincher all around town. 122 banners. Ain't nobody going to approve that. And Trusty Brown, please tell them what those banners say. It ain't even about her picture. Please read off what the banners say. No, Trusty Brown is about to read off what they say. No, Trusty game. I'll see y'all in another month. Wow. that you need to make. I, get, I have copies. Right, we're everybody. moving on, guys. We're going to move on. I have let's, let's continue no. with our board meeting. Right. Right. She, she, don't, she, don't wanna, she don't want the people to know she want to pay $20,000 for that in the state. black female. So so you and ain't nothing you can do about it. Like a lot of don't don't it to me. But thank you, trusting. Thank you. A lot of jealousy and envy. That's the shame. But go ahead, Kirky. Call the rough so we can move forward. <laughs> the nerve of you. Yes. Okay. This motion is for the um, corporate AP warrant list that was read into record by Stan, Trustee Stan Brown. Trustee House supersedes that motion to approve bills with the exceptions of the ones that he read out. So, Trustee Norwood? Aye. Trustee Stan Brown? No. Trustee Tammy Brown? Aye. Trustee House? Aye. Trustee Holmes? Trustee Belcher? Aye. The motion passed. Okay, so moving on. Next on the agenda, we have a couple lawsuits that we need to settle. So we went in closed session already. I'm going to give the floor to the attorney so he can explain to you what's going on. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, there's no need to go into closed session. These matters were already addressed with the board in closed session and by memo. With regard to West V Village, as a memo from my firm dated November 1 to the mayor and board um, recommending settlement recommending settlement um, with regard to Manji versus the village, a memo from December 28th. Yeah, I have to be. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'm just going to keep going. Yeah, go uh, Manji versus the village, a memo from December 28th and also Walker v. Village memo from December 28th. These were all settled in accordance with the authority previously granted to us by the board. Um, so it would be appropriate to just vote in open session. All right, um, Board of Trustees, y'all have any questions? We could do one motion and just name each person. Yeah, I can call out the names and the amounts. Um, so with regard to Manji versus the Village, 50,000. West V Village, 50,000. Walker V Village, right. 300,000. So is there a motion to approve the three settlements as read? I make a motion. Is there a second? Is there a second? All right, you may motion and second. Uh, please call the roll. Can you guys repeat, repeat your motion? I was speaking with the attorney. <clears throat> the motion for the lawsuits, the lawyer yes. just read its record. Who motion and who's Belcher. Second? Yep. And okay, Tom, thank you. Tammy Brown. Oh, that was one. Okay. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stan Brown. Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Motion passed. All right. Next on the agenda. Uh, is there a motion to terminate the contract of Otterson, Stark, Murphy, Frazier, and McGrath, AOTD, as legislative counsel? Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. It's been a motion and second to terminate the contract with Otterson. Um, any discussion? Yes. Can I be recognized? Sure. Go ahead. Um, so, of course, every month we come, we sit here and listen to this. Um, why we shouldn't have legislative counsel. Um, you get on TV and say you 25 and 0 and it's 25 and 0. And then, so I just had to pull all of the lawsuits that either been through the trustee, trustees versus Tiffany Henger or Tiffany Henger versus trustees. So exhibit one, I'll be passing out. Okay, we're in the middle of a meeting, but whatever. So anyways, so just so for the record guys, I'll put this on the agenda so that we can be able to get things in order. Right now, this law firm has my board, meaning the board of trustees, and he tells them what to do. 
he are he has been wasteful spending in our community. When you guys talk about money, it's all through the lawyer, but y'all are missing that. So what I'm asking is for the trustees to finally do what's right and terminate the contract with Otis. Otison has lost several cases here in our village, and yes, I'm 25 to 0, and I'm still winning. Everything that you guys keep alleging, accusing me of, not giving you, not doing, I've won every lawsuit. So again, I keep stating this for the record. It cannot be me. If I'm winning in court, we go to court for whatever they accuse me of, and then I win. But guess who spent your money? The trustees. They spent it, and they want the lawyer to collect. Same example. If a person keeps losing um, in court, why the news don't never actually uh, interview a winner? Delgado, he the one winning the lawsuits against mm -hmm. their legislative council. But y'all keep putting the loser on the news to tell people how to lose. That don't make sense to me. Like, pick somebody that's going to tell a person how to win and how we win and why we win. Yeah. Because everything they do is unethical. It's illegal. It's unconstitutional. Every judge put it in their, in their uh, order. So once you pull the orders and put facts out, it's not just putting stuff out in the media just to get people to think that somebody doing something other than winning around here. Um, also, as it relates to the signature case, I stated that. I stated what the trustees have done along with the clerk. So when I do fight back, as it relates to lawsuits against them, it will be factual and not my opinion of how I may feel about somebody. Because you cannot run a day-to-day -day operation off feelings. You run it off of facts. So is there anybody else that got anything to say about yes. why keeping this attorney on the payroll when all he do is lose? Yes. Y'all a secret store meeting that y'all just recently had, which was, again, illegal. You guys know you cannot, cannot appoint the attorney. Again, my powers, not your powers. But this is my point. Y'all sitting here telling the, the residents that it is, and it's not the truth. I yeah. wish you guys would really just learn the laws and learn what you do. What I do, I govern. You guys are legislative branch. That's the difference. But you guys want to do my job, which is govern the town. That's what I'm supposed to do day to day. Okay, so, Mayor. Yep. Go so ahead. Just for uh, just to clear this up for all these lawsuits that you're saying that you won, you didn't. We still have. It's never been more than nine, and there's still four open cases that's in court. So for you to constantly sit here and say. I won this case, I won this case. Can you provide documentation to see all these cases that you won? Because this is public information. It's not like I went and made it up or anything. Anybody can go to the Cook County Clerk of the Circuit Court and pull up Villager Dalton versus Tiffany Henyard or Tiffany Henyard versus Villager Dawson and see this stuff. So where does these 25 cases come from? So it's amazing that you are admitting that I've been winning every case. So I you was winning. Yes, I was I winning. say you win. You won one, 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 one case. One. One. You are you won won no, four no, no, cases. No. Just have you won one? Just one. Just one. I won. I I mean, what case what, what's your answer? Let my attorney handle that. No, because you just asked me a question. <laughs> let my attorney handle that. Have you guys won one case? Absolutely. Point it out. Show it to me. Y'all ain't won nothing. Absolutely. That's the problem. And now y'all want to sit here and upset about my record of 25 to 0. I just won one last week. Okay, well, okay. that's my point. Don't worry about it. I'm going to do that again. You can follow me. Subscribe to my channel. Tip me here. You're on the move if you want to get the facts. If you want the tea, you get it from me. You see me there. That's what you need to do. So all I'm saying to you guys is everything that somebody says, y'all need to fact check. Because people can easily tell y'all something. But we winning. I need mean to. Be. They not winning. But yet they spending y'all money. They two millions on, on the lawyer. Two millions. This man went and tried to take money from us, the village. If I wasn't right here, he would have had it. Don't y'all see what's going on? Two million from the insurance. Twice. Not once, twice. Two million. And did you tell him about the lawsuit we got against them? That two million dollars, we divided by each trustee. Each one I'm going to be responsible for 500000 apiece. Okay. Trustee House, Trustee Belcher, Trustee Brown, not Stan Brown, Tammy Brown, and Trustee Millwood, and including the clerk. All of them. But they're not telling you these facts. But this is the fire that I'm standing in for you, residents, you. They keep on spending your money but want to point the finger at us. At the end of the day, myself, my administration, we've run, we done nothing but work. Anything you ask us to do, it got done. They talk about lavish trips. They talk about travel. That's a lie. Point it out. Show me where I've been right here from Dalton. That's a lie. Show me where I've been from Dalton. So yeah. But again, these are things that people just threw out there, the news, yeah, y'all, the news just threw out there, and I don't go from Dalton. I don't know how many times I got to tell y'all that, but yet y'all put that out there, that negative uh, narrative of me. I'm sick and tired of it, guys. Stop with the mess. 
We here to do work. We got elected to do work. You guys ran on my ticket, especially Belcher. Ran on my ticket. Ain't never won none in her life. Lost every election. She won four, five times. Well, ran four, five times. She only won Another when she with me. Only one when she got on my ticket. Go choke it. I ain't got to lie about that. She ran for mayor. She ran for trustee. That's and trustee. It. And then it lost every time. Four or five times. The people do not like her. Period. And that's why she keeping up all this mess. Calm down, Help please. Me do this whole back Calm and forth. Down, the point is, we have to stop, guys, and pay attention. If y'all going to make judgment, look at both sides. And judge for yourself what you feel it is. That's it. That's it. So, again, um, I think we should terminate the contract with Odison. <laughs> Odison has been sitting here uh, running a clock up on the village. Um, he's right now currently trying to get money from us. Quiet, he has them vote to pay him, to settle that. How are you voting for your own attorney to get paid? That's the conflict of interest in itself, but y'all not paying attention to that. What lawyer you know can use their board to vote to say, hey, um, settle my debt. And they approved it. This is a super school on me. The same one that's super sitting next to They cannot do that. It's a shame. <laughs> so you guys need to pay attention to things like that. And it's a, it's a shame because one thing I'm going to say about uh, Michael Delgado, he's very credible. He's a super lawyer, just like his super mayor. He's a super oh, lawyer. Man. And he got so oh, many please. accolades as it relates to what he does with his firm. So you guys should check it out. I know you don't want to hear it, but go back check what we're saying not what somebody else's opinion is it's like high school man stop go check it out for yourself but again y'all need to let go of that attorney i'm gonna put it on here and keep on putting it on here because at the end of the day he running amok in our community and he got everybody looking bad look at our board we going back and forth over older so that's crazy somebody that don't do nothing for community somebody that continue to try to take our money somebody that convinced you guys to do a recall on me and lost and then he put in bills, residents. This is what y'all know. This is the kicker. He put in bills for election work. You can't do that. A municipality do not pay for a political election. But he did. He put, he put it in there. So for you that. But ain't nobody checking what I'm saying. You listen to the mess and not seeing the facts of what a person really trying to take over in our village. So with that being said, it's a motion in a second on the floor. Call the roll, clerk. Mm -hmm. Trustee Norwood. No. Trustee Stan Brown. Yes. Trustee Tammy Brown. No. Trustee House. No. Trustee Holmes. Trustee Belcher. No. All right. Well, residents, what I will say to you is we're going to continue to win, protect our village. I'm not going to let <laughs> someone come trail. and take our money from our accounts here in our village. Um, you got to pay attention to the conspiracy uh, that these four five people got going on in our village. Um, next on the agenda is override of the mayor veto for February 5th, 2024, January 2nd, uh, 2024, January 24, 2024. Okay. Motion. I have a motion. Do I need to do these individually or, or, or collectively? Okay. Okay, I would like to do omnibus. Omnibus. Okay, thank you. I would like to do an omnibus vote for item E, uh, seek, uh, and I make a motion to approve the over override of Mayor Vito for January 2nd, 2024, and January 24th, 2024. That's my motion. All right. Is there a second? Second. Is there a motion? Second. Um, any discussion? Colorado. Trustee Norwood? Aye. Trustee Stan Brown? No. Trustee Tammy Brown? Aye. Trustee House? Aye. Trustee Holmes? No. Trustee Belcher? Aye. Motion passed to override the veto for January 2nd and January 24th meeting. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. second. Is there a motion and second? Ms. Colorado? Trustee Norwood? Aye. Trustee Stan Brown? Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown? Aye. Trustee House? Aye. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Motion adjourned at 8.29 p.m. All right. Enjoy your night. I'll see you guys in passing. We got a lot of events coming up during the month. I'll see you out on the rink.